So um, there was this uh, family, they'd put all the kids to bed, and um, mom and dad were, were uh, settling down to just sit down and relax a little bit, and they heard the three-year-old just crying and just so, sobbing so loudly. So the dad went into the room and said, what's, what's wrong? And he says, Daddy, I swallowed a penny, and I just, he was just beside himself. He was just convinced that he was going to die because he'd swallowed the penny, and and uh, some of you have maybe had this experience, one way or the other. Okay. Anyway, so his dad was saying, no, don't worry about it. You know, it's not, it's, it's okay. You know, it's, it, it will work its way through. Um, don't worry about it. But the little boy was just sobbing and just couldn't stop. And he was just sure this was the end of his world and everything. So the dad had a, had a brilliant idea. He kind of, you know, kind of slyly reached into his pocket and, and he found he had a penny in there. And you know how, you, I'm, I'm not good at this, but some of you probably are. You can pull out that penny and kind of put it in your palm, you know, and then you go like this and, oh, I pulled a penny out of your ear. So he did that. So he, he, dad kind of did that and he put it on little Billy's ear and he says, look, I pulled it out of your ear. Well, of course, little Billy just stopped crying immediately and he was absolutely delighted. Thought, this is cool. So he immediately, before dad could, could know what was going on, he snatched that penny out of his dad's hand and he swallowed it and he says, do it again. Fear is all in your perspective, right? It's all depending on your perspective. And the, when we get scared and when we get overwhelmed, it's because what's happening is it appears that the circumstances of life are more than we can meet. And we don't think that we can, we don't have what it takes to deal with those things. And so we get beside ourselves and we get distraught and we don't know what to do. But as soon as we realize that either A, the circumstances really aren't that severe, as in little Billy's case, and they will work themselves out quite naturally over time, um, that, or when we realize that maybe they are severe, because sometimes, you know, life circumstances really are, right? It's not just like swallowing a penny. Sometimes there's stuff that's going on that is very difficult. And yet, when we activate our awareness of the resource that is within us, like in that story, like the dad is sort of the personification of that, he had some more wisdom, didn't he, than little Billy. He had some more experience. He had a, a, some, some ways to deal with things that were beyond what little Billy knew. And he was able to, in a sense, provide resource so that little Billy calmed down and he saw that situation in a different way. That's like us, isn't it? That what we have to do is to activate our awareness of God within us. Mother, Father, God is always there. Just like Billy's dad, he's always there. But we don't know it. And if we don't know it, then it does us some good, but it doesn't do us maximum good, right? So if we want to be able to let go of that fear, if we want to be able to push our growing edge to, to uh, meet life circumstances, what, is, uh, what we have to do is learn and grow to activate our own consciousness. You see the difference? The Christ is always within us. We're spiritual beings. Every single person on this planet and everything is an expression of God. And our job as human beings is to become aware of that, to become awake to it, to allow that to be active in our lives. That's what it means to grow spiritually. You can't get any more of God in you than you've already got because you're already 100% God, okay? But what spiritual growth is about is about activating our awareness of that and our consciousness of that, which means our ability to make it actual in our lives. That's what we are called to do.